In our body, we have natural collagen type 2. Unfortunately, some genetic factors, bacterial or viral infection, or smoking, can induce mutation in the collagen 2. This mutation results in replacement of arginine amino acid with citrulline amino acid. This little change has devastating lifelong sequences on the affected people. The antigen presenting cells, APCs, such as dendritic cells, which patrol our tissues, recognise this new mutated collagen. These antigen presenting cells have specific detecting molecules on their outer cell membranes called HLA molecules. Specific types of these HLA molecules, which are HLA DR1 and HLA DR4, become confused and deal with the new collagen as foreign bodies. Phagocyte them now! Phagocyte them now! As a result, the antigen presenting cells phagocyte these mutated collagen. After digesting the citrinated collagens, the APCs present some parts of the protein on their outer surface as foreign bodies. On the other hand, T helper cells in our body work as security detectors who search all antigen presenting cells for any suspicious foreign molecules. Once T helper CD4 cells meet HLA molecules connected to citrinated collagen, they become activated. This activation results in production and release of cytokines, IL2, which have autocrine effects as they come back to bind and activate their releasing T helper cells. IL2 induces T helper cell proliferation into two cellular lines, T helper 1, abbreviated as TH1, and T helper 2 cells, abbreviated as TH2. The TH2 stimulate the production of various antibodies, whereas TH1 are directed towards cell-mediated immunity and later production of interferon gamma and IL-17. Now we will focus on antibody production. Once TH2 binds the B cells, it activates it. This activation results in the sequence of B cell proliferations that produces two new cell lines, which are plasma cells and memory cells. Plasma cells produce various types of antibodies, whereas memory cells keep records of all foreign antigens in our body and provide long-lasting immunological memory. We will now focus on the antibodies. The first type of antibodies are the IgG antibodies, which attack the cyclic citrinated peptides, abbreviated here as CCP. The anti-CCP antibodies are specific markers for diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. The second type of antibodies are the IgM antibodies, which attack our IgG antibodies. So they are antibodies against our own antibodies. They are called rheumatoid factor, and they are very common in the serum of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Now both types of antibodies travel through blood to the joints, and even to other tissues. Remember, Rheumatoid arthritis is a joint disease with systematic manifestations. Now let's focus on joints, where antibody complexes accumulation activates phagocytes and complement systems.
The activated phagocytes release inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF-alpha, which play an important role in mediating the inflammatory damage to the joints. They also secrete IL-1 and IL-6. We also have IL-17 and interferon gamma produced by T-cells. Additionally, complement enzymes activate the neutrophils in the joint synovial fluids. Cytokines stimulate synovial membrane proliferation and swelling, which is a remarkable pathological sign of rheumatoid arthritis. Additionally, they activate osteoclast cells, which induce bone erosions. Angiogenesis is also stimulated by the cytokines. Together, cytokines released by activated macrophages and activated neutrophils induce the production of protease and collagenase enzymes, which progressively erode and destroy the cartilage layer of the joints. Narration reading by Carla Tordoff Gibson, Pharmacology and Therapeutic Department, King's College London, KCL University.